drive into the pistol around Boston. Yes, indeed. You hear the chants in the background, and you can tell already from Cloud9, they've got a bit of a setup here. Two smokes and a Molotov indicating there's some sort of execute coming in. It's going to be fast. NBK caught. This is not a good position, and he's going to have to fall back. They do have shots waiting on the site. Apex taking one headshot, looking for more. He's going to get one with the last bullet shot with a double headshot, and that will shut it down. Very, very quick approach there from Cloud9, but they needed to catch someone in that first push. They didn't get any kills to open that up. There was no space created, obviously trying to catch G2 off guard with just one quick flashbang over the wall. I mean, even if they did, shots inside the bomb site was an insurance policy. He doesn't have to do anything until the last two kills. This was beautiful. A stack from G2, and they had four players there before C9 knew what hit him. That is a rough start. Now, Sean on the desk was mentioning the fact that maybe, just maybe, Cloud9 have been watching a lot of G2 demos because they're playing a little bit in a certain pattern. That very much looked like G2 had been watching Cloud9 demos and had an idea of what might be coming because that's not a usual stack towards B. Oh, oh automatic. From top mid, shuts down Kenny and now he's got Apex pushing. There's another one! A second for automatic and Stewie's gonna make his move now. Trying to take advantage of the rotation and that shot just nearly misses. Shudder to imagine how close that one was. If he had got him dropping off the ticket booth mid-air, that would have been something else. Well, now, certainly have my attention. Five versus three here in G2. They almost have to take a bit of a risk. If they just spread out with these SMGs, unlikely that they're going to be able to win the round. So, something needs to change here. Playing very carefully. MBK, very aggressive. This is good news for G2, but automatic again. Shutting down with the Deagle, a triple kill so far. What an incredible round so far from Automatic. And I think he's just won this round for Cloud9. They're about to streak into the A bomb site. Finally, Tim's taken care of. And this is where Cloud9 make the move. Stewie's going to head in with the bomb. He's going to get that planet. And Shox has bypassed this whole ha attack towards the A bomb site. He pushed towards CT spawn. Now he knows. So there is a chance he can come back and make a play. I think Rush heard him. I think he ran just enough that Rush would have heard that. It's very possible. He's obviously calling it out that Palace is open as well. Tarek's about to spot one player, but he's out in the open. They're looking for Shocks. Now they're going to find him. There's the opening kill, and Shocks gets shut down. It's just body, and it's unwinnable. He's been dinked, and Cloud9 responds. This is the team of the Major Moses. Win the pistol round and lose the following one. Unacceptable if you're G2, but with these kind of headshots, what are you going to do? Exactly. It's hard to fault them so much. This is obviously a plan they have. Apex tries to catch him off guard. This is just a straight-up duel. You said it. To get back into that, G2 had to take some kind of a risk, and it doesn't pan out, but really well done with the Deagles. And Cloud9, sneakily, a very good team at responding with these four spies, with the Deagles, with the pistols. So, a bit of a shocking moment early on for the French now. Obviously, they will be used to it, so they just need to take a deep breath and recover from that one. But it does say something about the strength on this Cloud9 team. I mean, Automatic is one of those characters that could do that. But honestly, the way that Rush has been coming into this tournament, I mean, I'd be looking for him a little bit as well in this. Rush is a huge X factor for this team. He's, he's one of those players that on other lineups, likely going to be one of the star players. He's got the skills for it. We saw it when he, with his time in Optic. Uh, coming over now, he's obviously taken a step back when you have guys like Stewie and Tarek, and you came into a lineup that had automatic playing the way he was. You take a step back and you give those guys space, and Rush is one of the players with that mentality who can do that and still kind of shine. He can, bring, he can win you a map, essentially, which we saw in the group stages. So we did indeed a quick technical timeout here as we should be getting back into the game hopefully soon enough. Now, what did he do at this point? I mean, they were trying to be pretty aggressive in the middle there and it didn't really work out against the Deagle. Uh, so what do they do in the upcoming rounds? What's a good way to sort of make sure that, uh, that maybe Cloud9 don't get those kind of battles too much? Well, Enders, this is one of the, this is one of the tricky parts if you're G2 because we know they have a tendency not to be a broken record to go back to it. G2 is one of the teams that has struggled with managing their economy throughout the history of all French lineups, really. But especially this team, the tournaments that they've won, if you think back to Malmo, was one with great economy management. Here, I think your number one goal has got to be don't start this trend of force buying. You want to get the AWP in Kenny S's hands as soon as possible. Yeah, and that's such a good point. I mean, it's it's something that we've seen in the past from teams. You said U2 is one of them. We've seen it from Navi in the past, right? It comes at the cost of your main opera, who's going to be 
really needing all that money. So we'll see how that unfolds, and especially if they can get the double up, because they do have the players for it. And Mirage is a map that's well known for it. So we'll see what's going to happen and how they're going to play it. Just being told it's just a small team speak issue, so we should be getting back into it at any moment. As we do watch these kind of players, they get to sit there and just basically consider that, you know, G2 that they just got their heads ripped off by, by Automatic Steagle for a little bit longer. Yeah, got a Puts soak a smile in smile on my face. Yeah, I can tell, Moses, you're enjoying it a little bit, <laughs> a little bit too early. Always be careful with that. Uh, but you, that kind of turnaround, um, I mean, we've seen what it could do already. Obviously served Navi very well. Guy in the background there, Smiths, is, um, is also one that I think maybe sometimes overlooked a little bit because, I mean, we know Shox obviously has a pretty deep mind for the game. Yeah. The worry has always been that if he has to put sort of his mind into it, maybe it's going to come at the cost of his own, you know, level, which is incredibly high. So, yeah, I think having Smiths here once again is going to make a big difference just for, again, watching those last you know, bit of demos, just getting a little bit intel in, trying to see if they can read what Cloud9 are going to be doing. I mean, that's the big thing, because as we've been seeing in this game between coaches and in-game leaders, it's not necessarily, you know, how good is your coach on an individual level, how good is your in-game leader on an individual level. It's the interaction between the two that is the most important, how they work together. And Shox has publicly stated a number of times how much confidence, how much faith, and he has Smiths as a former teammate, as a friend, and now, and now as a coach as well. So those two working together to try and put together game plans, they're going to help G2 make a run deep into these playoffs. Actually, in that sense, I feel like Shox is almost sort of uniquely positioned because even if he was to run out of ideas and Smith was too, or they didn't have any more timeouts, he still has Apex and MBK who are very qualified to come up with ideas. So, like, they, they have so much on that team. Yanko mentioned it as well. This is a map. By the way, issues have been solved. We are going to start getting live here as the freeze time counts down. Yanko mentioned it as well. Apex has, as a player calls on this map, and, yeah. you know, because they had some struggles on it, and they've brought it out as a wild card. They've surprised some really big teams on it. All Sorry. Right, well. Yep. We're back into it now. Third round coming up. It will be AK's three of them. The one from us that they stole the MP9 as well on Rush there. And Scout, they actually have forced into this round, Moses. Your, your worst worst nightmares come true here it for might, D2. Might be my best yes. dreams, I guess it could be. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a, a small situation. And we are going to go right back to a technical pause. So I'll restart the round. All right. <laughs> G2's reconsidering. Like, oh, we didn't mean to do that. Switch it up. It is dangerous. I mean, you can. I can sort of understand the scout pick. Uh, I'm always curious. Whenever you run into that scout first, it seems like some teams, they like, they sort of want to go very slow against it. And yeah. I always feel like the risk is you get you get slowly chipped away at. I much prefer if you realize where it is, try and go to the other side and just rush. You know, just wait, don't wait for it to show up. You know. I mean, it's always fun. We've talked about it a number of times. Like the scout and the deagle combination is essentially. It's almost like having two scouts because just one scout shot does enough damage to where the deagle then gets very dangerous. Obviously, the CZ as well. And then if you're someone like Simple, who we saw in, uh, in the last quarterfinal, just gets three kills with it on a round like this and shuts everything down. All right. MBK dishing out the, the info that we needed, getting, getting everybody ready in the server, I expect. So we'll see how this all unfolds. Luckily, it's pretty early days, and it was like a natural reset in the game, so hopefully not too much will change in terms of the overall momentum for either team. I feel like it's it's better now than, than at the late late stage of a round. Yeah, definitely. We haven't gotten too much into this game. I think the, the trouble would be if there is frustration. You did see some of that coming out of NBK just early on. But Listen to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Ultimately, uh, for Cloud9's point of view, how many rounds do you expect them to get on this first half to consider it a success? I mean, obviously, uh, the more the better, but uh, what's a comfortable range where they're like, all right, they can sort of, you know, look at each other and say, this will be fine, second half will, will, will be doing a good job. I think once you get up towards like uh, six or seven, you start to feel really comfortable with the half. You're gonna, want, you're gonna want more, but what you really want is to have some kind of a cushion. So if you lose the pistol round, like if you only get five rounds, opposing team is 10 and they win the pistol, we haven't really seen it in this event, but theoretically, if they get the ensuing two rounds and then it's 13 to five all of a sudden, so you just want to have enough of a gap to where that pistol round isn't just a backbreaker right at the start of the half. But I mean, we've seen times, and, and this, is, this is kind of the worry, and this is why I mentioned it, if G2 does get themselves into this kind of, this cycle of, of force buying, then all of a sudden, Cloud9's looking at the ability to get up towards nine, 10 rounds. That's exactly right. Definitely a strong start for them. We haven't even seen some of the aces up the sleeve. I mean, Skadoodle AWPing uh, is one of the things that has been looking so much better now. Much more consistency, able to hit some absolutely crazy flicks as well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely going to need him because once you get that op coming out on guys like Kenny, and then as we've seen in this event as well, NBK has been phenomenal with it. Once you get the op in his hands, um, then it starts getting very, very scary. So they need to have someone like Skadoodle 
you know, hitting his shots very, very well, having impact in the game with his AW key. He, he can't just be a viewer, right? He can't just be a yeah. spectator inside the server. So he's, he's had a good tournament so far. I mean, the real consideration you have to make is if you look at the Cloud9 we saw, you know, through the challenger stage, how they kind of breeze through with G2, both going 3-0, very dominant. Um, you, want, you want that Cloud9. And then when you look yes. at them in the Legend stage, when they went down 0-2, and then they had to go in a 3-0 run to get back into this to, to make sure they qualified for the playoffs, you want that Cloud9 that went 3-0 rather than 0-2, obviously. So we've seen a couple different versions of C9. You want the good one. And once again, we back in. looks like issues are somewhat fixed. All right, all right. Third round is going to be coming up now. We do have the rifles out. At least one of them there, the scout on G2, but Cloud9 still looking better at the moment. So third round here. And already Tarek setting up for a quick Molotov into that connector just to make sure that no one is going to be pushing in. That is a danger on this map when you're playing even just against pistols. You can actually get attacked from three different angles in that mid area. So you want to make sure that they can't do all of it at once. Just the smoke in window again is another little mechanism just to make sure you're not going to get easily attacked from three different angles. A slow approach here from Cloud9. They're not going to make any big mistake by just rushing onto a site here. No, you can't. You've got to use this. You've got to treat this like a gun round. Make sure you're using your utility, clearing your angles. And first test here, bodies on the floor. He's dropped. There's Apex with the response. And even Automatic's dinked up. That flashbang doesn't do its job. But Skadoodle with the trade. Apex has bought some time and some space for these rotations and Cloud9 moving onto the site. MBK and Kenny are in that bomb site. Kind of dug in deep. And not really moving out just yet. They would love just one easy kill. It's going to be kind of hard to dig out MBK unless he makes the mistake and jumps. Rush walking in. His head is going to be showing first. That's very dangerous. Now he's all the way up, jumping right on top of MBK and taking him down. And that was the one move they needed to have happen. Kenny's going to be dropped next. And now it's just shocks. One versus two. He is being sandwiched in. Has the scout in hand and Skadoodle shutting him down easily for a triple of his own. So very good job indeed. Second round for Cloud9. Skadoodle looking good with that rifle in this round. Some very, very quick headshots from him. That's quite nice to help them recover. Got to be happy about that. Cloud9 does something really, really cool. They make their way up catwalk, and they're about to enter into the bomb site, and they just hit the pause button. And what that kind of does is make those G2 players, they're stacked, and they have no idea how close they are. They have no idea if they've fallen back. They get a little bit nervous. They don't have the information, and that's where you see it's the timing with NBK. Is he looking up? Is he looking over at the bomb site? He was the only one who could get that info, and he gets punished. 10 on Stewie, testimony to the fact that he's figured it all out. He knows they're not going to have any armor, and it's not really the hardest math to do, but still, it's important. They've got your one flashbang, Anders. That's on Apex. He's sitting far, far back. They want to wait for the bomb to start being planted, start hearing those footsteps, and they're going to pop flash through a smoke if there's one there. They're still going to be at a really long range from the actual rifle, so I like the idea. You always love seeing this, so the French have tried to bring it out. There's a great flashbang. Rush will go down, Skadoodle, he's behind cover, and he's doing a fine job at the moment, getting the last couple of kills, and Automatic helping out. Still, the attempt was certainly there, but it will be 3-1 favoring Cloud9, heading into the fifth round, and here's the big challenge. Kenny S on that AWP. Yeah, it's out. He saves up just enough in those two rounds to be able to bring out an op, which is quite nice for him. Uh, not, not great for Cloud9, although Skadoodle's gonna have one on the other side of things, and Stewie's gonna keep his MAC-10. Expect him to be a bit more aggressive, perhaps, leading the way, try and get some intel. Smoke out towards mid, and that's gonna miss. He might have been bumped. That's not ideal. That's not good at all. There is a player pushing mid, so there's a timer on how slow Cloud9 can be on this. Apex has all the information, and pretty soon they're gonna rotate back, and he's gonna have a fast flank. So much knowledge here for G2. That's a very good push indeed. They're starting to rotate more people over, as you said. Body not quite wanting to challenge yet. Shock's getting ready for any kind of a peek through the smoke there. It's still more than a minute left, and they are making their way onto the site very quickly. Shock's improvised boost right at the edge. This could be great. Stewie's already gone down. No bomb plant happening yet. In fact, the bomb has dropped back at that ramp, so now Cloud9 really slowing it down. Good attempt from Tarek, but he's going to get shut down from Body. Three versus five, and a bit of a dink in the face. This automatic taking down Apex. That grenade rushes in, and that might be the kill here. MBK cleaning it up with a great triple. Shutting down that whole line. And that will be G2 winning a second round. That's tough. You saw Stewie wanted to jump over to find some kills, get sneaky through that smoke with the flashbang. Cloud9 didn't have any success on the initial entries, and that allows G2 
to be so patient with the retake. And I mean, actually, even leaving the bomb back towards the ramp, that's, that's kind of the nightmare scenario because you want to get that up, especially if they're playing retake. You want to get that bomb down as soon as possible to at least have the bonus money. It's not going to be an op in Skadoodle's hands after that loss either. He's got an AK. No, but there's two in the hands of G2. Yep. Very deep grenade landing in the back of Connector. Kenny, he's going to have to sort of fall back behind it so it does exactly what it was designed to. Tarek picking up the kill on Kenny. This is huge. Automatic jumping into their own Molotov. and almost works. Apex is on the other side to clean that kill up. Now Body has gone down in the meantime. It's still a three versus four. And Stewie flashed in, almost getting it. Apex are 19 health. And there's the following headshot, leaving it two versus three. This is what makes this matchup so fun to watch. Constant aggression, so much fighting across the map. Cloud9, a very fast pace, and Skadoodle shuts down Shocks. It's NBK with this AWP, a one on two. And this is so difficult to win with the Cloud9 player in towards CT spawn. Controlling that portion of the map can be so difficult, and I don't think he's gonna go for it. A Hail Mary trying to spam through, but I think you have to back off if you're NBK in this situation. Cloud9 takes all the G2 attention towards mid, and they hit that A bomb site. No scope doesn't land. Oh, the second one does. He's gonna go for Skidoo, but he gets cleaned out. Cloud9 takes them all, takes all the guns away. If you are a new viewer watching at home, always notice in these type of 1v1s, 1v2s, do they have any grenades left? Now, NBK had an HG grenade. He needed a smoke, a Molotov, something to force the issue. Otherwise, they're not going to peek him until he touches the bomb and he's out in the open. Very much worth noticing. So, kind of a good attempt, but ultimately Cloud9 played it the way they should. Didn't give him the opportunity. It's, it's a great tactic they just pulled out as well, considering they, they took the, all the attention towards mid, and that left only one player for G2 at the A bomb site, and they just threw bodies at him, and there was no way he could defend everything. Cloud9 back with the advantage of weaponry. Oh, no! That's two missed smokes early on in this game for Cloud9. It hasn't hurt him too much. We got to keep our eye on that. Definitely don't want to do that. So far, it hasn't cost him too much. There are the double grenades down towards the catwalk, blocking off anyone who's holding that corner is always a good idea. And MPK is simply going to get run over. Not much else that we could have expected. So ultimately, a good call here for Cloud9 ending up with the B-bomb site and should be fairly easy. I mean, G2, there's no point for yeah. them to run halfway across the map and try and defend that. You've got a decent amount of investment into this round with the, with the two Famas, the SMG, the nades, the armor. I mean, you just keep it alive. That's the only option you have if you're G2. So right off the bat, as soon as NBK goes down, they back off and they live to fight another day. They're going to have these weapons. They don't have to respend the cash that they won't have. But more importantly, if you're Cloud9, it's another round where you're going to keep the AWP away from Kenny. So everything is going early going on for C9 has been all gravy. They're loving this. Yes, they are. Building that economy slowly, making sure they can suffer a round loss or two if it ever comes. And also, just again, the grenade users has just been very good. I feel like it's... Um, outside of the smokes. Outside of the smokes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but even, I mean, even if some of them fail, I just... I just love watching an American team play to this level. I feel like that's something that they haven't always been able to keep up with. So seeing it right here is obviously good news. And it's working as well. Three round lead. Kenny's had the AWP one time. And he, he got shot down through smoke by Apex, I think. So he had no chance to really use it. That was also the, the round of the double op where NBK couldn't rotate in time to get in on the action. That was just Cloud9 with a very convincing take towards the A bomb site. Another round again, it's just going to be two Famas. NBK picking up a Deagle just because his teammates have a decent amount of weaponry. You want to be able to help out if need be. Cloud9 again, keeping it pretty simple. Fast pace towards mid. This time there's no one rotating from G2. This is going to be a big stack that they run into. It all depends on the pacing. They've already got a player up connector as well. He's wrapping into the A bomb site. They spotted out shocks. He can get nothing done after that first kill. And one more time, Cloud9 is going to swarm the defense into the site. Instantly smoking that up, then jumping on top the box to look over it. And maybe a little bit too aggressive there. Kenny was waiting for it. That could be dangerous now. It's a 2 on 2 Don't want to give a round like this one away. They've done everything right up until this point, but that might have been just a tiny mistake. Does spot one guy out. Now NBK up on the stairwell, but Rush with a headshot. Taking him down. Kenny now. Molotov into the corner, and Rush is still going to win the fight. Fire at his feet, Moses. That's a triple kill for him. Doing his best Nico impression, I guess you'd say. And Cloud9 that guy fans has it right. Out. Instantly <laughs> denied. That guy's got it wrong. Oh, he's brought the baguette as well, Moses. <laughs> Is it all the way from France, do you think? 
It could be. Wouldn't want to eat that again. Well, big, big lead for Cloud9 early on in this. Six to two, we have a tactical timeout coming out from G2. They need to figure things out. And here's the thing, this gets scary because if Cloud9 is able to win this round, this is the first time we're going to see Kenny S back on the op for a number of rounds. And if G2 can't win it, then all of a sudden you're looking at a Cloud9 that's poised to just blow this lead out of the water and just, just go massive with it. Getting to the point where you might not even be giving G2 a chance to come back into the second half, but we'll have to see how this one ends. UMP on MBK, three M4s, missing some utility and missing some kits. We saw this throughout the Challenger State, the New Legend State as well. We saw what happens when you just don't have the money. It can really lead to some desperate halves on this uh, game. So maybe that's what we're about to witness. Bit of a jump there, Skadoodle guessing the wrong side, but there's Kenny picking up the kill on automatic. And it is about time. I think that might have been his third kill. So he needs to sort of step it up and get back into the game somehow. Well, a little bit more than that, but still not that encouraging. No, he did his trademark, jump out the window, get on towards Catwalk and find the angle quick. I don't know if Automatic expected it any whatsoever. Really using the gap of the smoke that was thrown a base at Catwalk. And they're going to remain aggressive on mid. Shocks and Apex and Connector. Kenny working Catwalk with that ADVP. This is where he can be so dangerous. A lot of this comes down to timing, though. There's a flash in mid. That was from Connector. There's the peak. They know Apex is there, and he's just baiting. He's baiting for shocks. There goes Kenny, and it's a good trade. Somehow Cloud9 has come out okay, and Tarek pushes the issue, runs out of bullets, but the pistol does the job. Oh my god, he swapped out the AK to continue that fight. Through the smoke, there's Tarek on range, taking down MBK, and it's all on body. One versus three, he's already got the first kill. But the bomb will go down, and now once again, Cloud9 can just fall back and play this one safe. He has to go quick. He has to make this work. Body pushing into the side, goes for the fight. He's going to take one kill. He has no idea where Tarek is, and he's going to get shut down. Quad kill here for Tarek, picking up the seventh round for Cloud9. And it is looking much too good for G2's comfort here. Two things happen that are incredible. That kill from Stewie onto Kenny was immediate. Two bullets. Shocks and Apex played that perfectly. Apex was baiting for him. But then the confidence of Tarek comes through. Keep pushing forward. Take the unexpected fights. That is a beautiful round from Tarek. A perfect example of you give him an inch and he's going to take a mile. And he's put Cloud9 up by five rounds. Smoke for the mid window. Not going to fail this time. I'm hearing some cheers just for the smoke. That's enthusiasm for you. Set the bar low and you'll never be disappointed comes to mind. That's how I live my life. <laughs> oh, well, this automatic spraying it down. They don't have very much to fight back with. So automatic and Terry got easily going to be cleaning up that aggression in the middle. Shocks is about to find a miserable end to his life as well. They are all around him. He's going to get one good kill and that will be it. Terry with a triple. Eight rounds for Cloud9. Moses, where are the... Tactical timeout. Where's the turnaround here for Cloud for uh, for G2? They need something. We, we've we've only seen one. I, the big thing, the big thing that Cloud9's done great is when these ops, when they get in the fight with the AWPs. I mean, they're not letting them get two shots off. They're they're closing the gap very very quickly, making it uncomfortable. I mean, Stewie had a great shot on Kenny the last round from Connector to Catwalk, and even though he dies immediately afterwards, that's the opening they needed. This double op set up a lot of investment. You can see $6,000 basically between NBK and Kenny. Each of them spend it. Smoke's going to go in, going to block the vision. Shocks is close behind the ball. It's all he's going to get the first shot at Sui. And no trade this time. Body's there for Shocks, and now they get aggressive. Shuts down the hit. Almost the ace then. Now, that was very cool. In the middle of that fight, another flashbang comes over the wall for yeah. Shocks to continue. That's why he goes for the next two kills. Very well done. Also, tiny detail. It didn't really work, but Kenny actually tried to body block that, mo that smoke in the window, yeah. which you can do, which is such an effective way of doing it. More flashbangs raining in here, as you can tell, and Shock's just shutting it all down. So that's, that's a great round. And that, that's also what you need if you're G2. You need the riflers to start having some kind of you know, impact and effect where you can actually slow down this pace from Cloud9. They've been able to go so fast throughout this and trade everything. <laughs> Another landed smoke. We love to see it. Flashbangs admit have forced back the defense. It is a touchdown there in the window. Shocks with a spray coming in. And Apex hitting a headshot as well, looking for more. He's almost out of bullets, but backup is there. Apex coming into the perfect time. And a leg shot on Skadoodle. Oh, the wall bang. You can even wall bang to the left of that window. You don't have to shoot just to the wood, Moses. It goes through the other side of the wall as well. Kenny will clean it up there, but obviously Apex 
the hero of that round, the perfect timing. It will be another round here for G2. So they're starting to come alive. This is where you really notice like the double-edged sword of how fast and aggressive Cloud9 is being. When Stewie comes from underpass, he's actually got his knife out. He's trying to be as fast as possible and never expected shocks to be there. So you lose a little bit in terms of your awareness, in terms of your ability to check different angles, different corners. This time it just gets shut down. Shocks, once he gets Stewie, the catwalk hit has to pause and try and try and take care of him. And that's when the flashbangs roll over the, the roof and blind everybody. Back to the basics for Cloud9, only pistols, and it's gonna be a rush towards this A bomb site. Shocks, he's got the angle, he's got the range, and tapping away, he does get taken down. So does Body. They've given himself a chance, and that's out in the open, that's Kenny. A huge mistake. A little bit too much confident, peeking out that wide with no backup at all. Two versus two, and this should not be happening. They have one flashbang and no armor, just pistols. It shouldn't be this close at all. Stewie looking for one more miraculous headshot. Grenade training in left and right. He's out in the open and he's going to get taken down. Apex and MBK doing a good job combining to close out that round. But that is, that's such a ridiculously expensive round for G2. It really is. And I mean, it's not the biggest impact because the half is winding down. But certainly if they get one of these AWPs taken away in this next round, it's going to hurt. I mean, those are some disgusting shots with the Deagle. They're really putting G2 on notice every single round. And then at the end, I mean, obviously, it's just too much utility for the G2 players at the end, isn't it? Molotovs, ra nades raining in, smokes in the choke points. I don't even think Rush could really get anything except for an upgraded pistol at the end. Three ops for G2. All right, then. I guess if you have the money, spend it, I guess. I mean, this is... Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's funny because even the double op setup hasn't really bailed him out of this hole. It's been the success of the aggression with double rifle setups. Trying to use the nade smoke to obscure Skadoodle's vision, and it works perfectly. That's a great opening pick. There's the follow-up, and even Automatic can't trade. G2 have found their footing in this half, and they're making a comeback. Oh, that's a peak and a half there from Stewie taking down MBK. You saw the experience of a veteran there for Shot Show. Exactly right. Peeking into the debris from the first grenade, and that worked absolutely brilliantly. Now, Stewie's picked up an AWP, is making a run for it. The bomb is still in T-spawn. Two versus four. You really only should be losing rounds like these, G2, if you, if you make mistakes. You have to give something to Cloud9 here for this to work out. Absolutely. The, the one thing that G, hurts G2 in this kind of scenario is they have no indication of where the bomb was. It was back in T-spawn when they get all those kills. So they have to be very cautious of the entirety of the map. You can see they're kind of giving up over towards the B-bomb site. There's one player who's going to be on catwalk, who's going to be blocked off by that smoke. One player in the mid-window who might choose to rotate over towards market, and two at A. Yeah, Apex is going to hear the smoke going down, but he's not hearing anybody else. I think he could even look at his eyes and tell that he was listening intently for anyone walking in the hallways. And by now, he must be calling it out that nobody's walked through. Nothing's really happening here into the middle we go. Oh, that's a good flick. That was shot. Trying to creep down the stairwell and connector. 25 seconds. And that number is the big obstacle right now for Cloud9. They really need to make a move right about now. Otherwise, they're simply going to run out of time. And Smoke, can they make their way through? 17 seconds in what is now a two versus three in what seems an almost unwinnable round here. 11 seconds as they push onto the bomb site, trying to see if they can find any kind of opening. It will be a leg shot on body. Six seconds, they line up for the spray! And he's going to put it down. It? There might not be enough time for it. Oh, oh no. G, G2 are going to pick up the round. It was the last possible second there. Oh, my Lord, they made that close. They line up for him, and you can see Kenny even shaking his head. This has been a rough game, but Cloud9 almost make it work. That smoke on Catwalk was so brilliant from Cloud9 because that's what forces the rotations. That's what takes the attention off of mid. Apex was going over to the B bomb site to investigate. His eyes were taken away. It was left to Shocks rotating down through Connector, and he gets caught off guard. And then G2 know they're trying to use the bomb as a, as a teammate, essentially. They're trying to let the, the timer run out, knowing that Cloud9 still had to plant. And they get caught being a little bit too lackadaisical in CT spawn, but... Well, there's another, the there's another reaction gift for you, Moses. The, we, we've, we've got it. No, we don't. The down <laughs> to the last second there. That was very well done. Impressive to see Cloud9 playing again this composed, even if, you know, two versus four, and you almost win that round. This has been the large shift in how Cloud9 has played that has, that has got people, a lot of people excited about them. When they hit this level, when they are making those kinds of decisions in, in situations in mid-rounds and late rounds, this is what makes them such a dangerous lineup. G2 simply made too much money on a good run to really be impacted by economy down the stretch. It's Cloud9 instead, a Deagle and Automatic, which we've seen be very dangerous, but a scout on Tarek is the one that hurts. 
Let's see. 15th round. Final of the half. G2 would love to win this one. It's been a rough start for them. Cloud9 finally being stopped a little bit throughout the half. Automatic ready and waiting, trying to see if anyone would sneak through. If they get this kill on the other side on body, then the rest of the bomb side is going to be guarded by shocks alone, and backup will be miles away. Now, the good thing is that middle peak here from Kenny is going to give them a lot of stuff to work with, and Molotov will hold them back for a while. Kenny is going to fall back in the meantime, and now they're picking up the bomb as well. It looks like A. That also gives a lot of information over to G2. You saw Kenny booking it back towards connector. If you're putting out a Molotov there, it's automatic. You're giving away the position that Claw9 has players ready to go at ramp. Hearing the chance is starting to wind up as Kenny picks up a kill there on Tarek. That's a good start, but that smoke is going to be right in front of him, and he's going to go for the peak. Misses one chance, goes for it again, and Stewie shuts him down. Going to be shocked with one more return, looking for the triple, and he will get it to close out the round. 7-8 in favor of Cloud9, but that's such a strong five-round streak to close out the half with. They're going to be excited about that. And God, the G2 need that. They needed those rounds to make the second half doable. That was poised to turn into a really, really bad half for them. But good recovery off the back of the rifles. Guys like Shox, guys like Apex did a great job at the point of attack down the stretch. The op's really pretty quiet for the G2 side of things, which is incredible seeing how, like, the, the double op was what they wanted to switch into. Yes, you're right. That didn't really work out. And at least for the first part of the half, the American team did a great job of limiting the economy for the French. Now, with this kind of scoreline, Moses, you win the pistol, do you win the whole, whole game here, or is... Is that not enough? That's not enough. That's absolutely not enough, especially because both these teams, both G2 and Cloud9 now, I mean, getting reputations for being able to win those rounds with Deagles, with CZs. We saw Cloud9 do it in the first half. And it's close. I mean, it's as close as you could possibly make it. So you know, this doesn't end with the pistol round. Once you start seeing, you know, I mean, now it's Cloud9 who's in that dangerous economic situation on the CT side where things are more expensive. If they get reset early on, that's almost the nightmare scenario. So. We'll see what they have in store for the pistol round. Oh. <laughs> what a brave man. His friend <laughs> looks scared just sitting next to him. Are we sure it is his friend? Do you want to implicate him, you know, right away, Moses? You gotta be careful. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. No, there definitely are still a couple of G2 supporters left. He's got the howl, the howl pin. Ooh. All right. Love that. It's a rich man, in other words. Yeah, right? <laughs> the camera is loving him. Now, what would you want? We've got 10 seconds, Moses. How, do, how did G2 win this pistol round here for the, for the T side? Well, they've gone, they've gone with four Glocks and a, and a Deagle. And what we actually, we've actually seen a lot of teams, or not, maybe not a lot, we've seen a couple teams go for that one Deagle buy. So you can either use MBK off on his own to try and pick into the one of the bomb sites, get a kill, force some rotations, which is exactly what it looks like happening. MBK over towards A ramp. But you want to close the gap with the, D, or I mean with the Glocks. And if you're not going to get it with utility, if you're not going to use smokes and flashes, you need NBK to produce something, whether it applies enough pressure that it forces a rotation or he gets a kill. He's at the A ramp looking for it. So they want to kill on A and then for this push to work. I think that's how the sequence is going to be. He's slowly sneaking out. Tarek is going to have such advanced warning, though. Now he's engaged Rush on the other side, but Tarek sees them and NBK goes down. That's Rush. Picking up a critical kill. They should know a lot about what's happening right now, Cloud9. They've actually seen everything they need to. And now the push comes in through the connector. Shot in the back is automatic. Picking up two big headshots. Terry gets one and another one coming in. Stewie picking it up there. Oh my god, grinding on him in the corner. That's a little bit too much almost. It will be Cloud9 to pick up the second pistol round. Cloud9 put themselves in such good positions. The rotations were perfect. Once G2 jumped down towards underpass, that was all telegraphed. They could hear the footsteps. Stewie was there behind the wall. This is a big kill from Rush. Oh then my you, god. Yeah, it's beautiful. You're going to see Rush push out towards triple box in the site. Stewie's waiting and automatic on catwalk. Same with Tarek when he follows up. That's just too many people from too, too many different uh, angles for G2 to handle without utility. And now all Cloud9 has to do is something no one else has done so far in this, uh, this playoff stage is win the second round. That'd be nice. That is, I hesitate to say, but it's sort of the way the game is supposed to work. It has been a struggle for a lot of teams to be able to actually do it. 9-7. So nothing has been decided yet as you all went through, but we'll see if it's going to make a difference here anyway. If they can, then they'd be up to 11-7 by the time that G2 could realistically buy not getting a bomb plant in the round. That means they're going to have to wait a bit longer. They have bought armor and pistols, though. And Apex is out for blood here. 
This could be a good old-fashioned double fake. They're not showing the bomb. The bomb is in the middle. Stewie's brought low. Players are ready to pounce on B, but they're going to back off, whether that's because of the defense they encountered or the pressure that's being applied towards A. That's a great kill from Rush. That's a huge impact. He knows his teammates are low on HP. They can't just sit back, getting position inside the bomb site as well. That's beautiful space created by him on the defense, and Kenny's the next one up to make this move. Now he's gone into Shadow, and he could probably guess they won't have a Molotov for this position. Later on, it's going to be a little bit more dangerous to be here, but right now he can feel relatively safe. Kicking out at the perfect time. Actually, he thought he got that kill with the first couple of bullets, so a little bit of hesitation there, but he's going to follow it up. And Rush doing a fine job closing out the round. Comes through, and there's the ace. Picking it up and shutting down G2 once again. Rush. <laughs> He wanted that fifth kill so bad, he starts shooting on the ladder, wasn't even waiting to get up top. That's phenomenal. You're exactly right. I mean, the, the knowledge that there's not going to be a whole lot of utility to use to clear him out. Great poise from Rush. More impact from him in this game in Cloud9, 10 to 7. Not going to be a whole lot for G2 to play with. One flashbang purchased up. Single flashbang. I mean, it worked for Cloud9, so maybe they are going to try something similar. In fact, it is. Pretty much a carbon copy of uh, that strat. They got down and did get the bomb down and a couple of kills. Just a bomb down is enough, really. That's uh, what you're looking for in this kind of scenario. Jumping out right into the SMGs. It is a bit of a bloodbath going on here as they will finally get the kill in and surprisingly not going to get the bomb plant down. They just had to run and try and pick it up and now it's out of the open, so that's definitely going to be the end of it. That's actually a very big kill to get from Skadoodle. That one player prevent the bomb from being planted. That's huge, so really well done from him. It's a small thing, but it denies $800 across the board to G2. And we'll see, does Skadoodle want an AWP drop towards him? He does. So Automatic's gonna drop one over. Kenny's debating whether he wants one of his own and he is gonna grab it. He's got light armor, there's no utility, but we are gonna get that duel again between the two oppers. Quietly rush with that ace has made his way to the top of the scoreboard for Cloud9. Otherwise, it's, I mean, it's pretty even across the board. Rush versus Shots, who is at 19 kills. Always someone you have to look out for. Always dangerous. 11-7 right now. If you've only been watching Counter-Strike in the last couple of years, Shots might have sort of flown under the radar a bit. But um, if you've been, been there back, from the baby. beginning, then you, you would know. Very careful approach in this round from G2. Very cautious, very slow paced. They want to make sure they're not getting pushed upon. There's smoke ringing out into the window. Skadoodle's going to give up that position, but he's got to at least stay nearby because there can be a boost into the window. He's got to be cautious of that. Without a teammate in the ladder room, that can catch him off guard entirely. Boosting up to try and get a pick towards Catwalk. Nothing there for G2 either. Just under a minute. Skadoodle over aggressive. There's no recovery from that position. Might be a bit of a misstep there. Now they're boosting. All the way over on Catwalk. Spray is in, and Stewie picking up those kills. Easily automatic to follow up. And taking down Body now. A lot of trouble here for the E2 team. They need it more. They're only going to get that one kill. That late boost on Catwalk as well. Uh, I mean, the spray transfer from Sui, stopping them from actually getting over towards the A bomb site. That's dirty. That was so critical for him because the A bomb site was about to be under a lot of pressure. Right here, and he transfers down. Kenny, there's that no head armor coming into effect. Immediately dies. And yeah, this boost is quite nice. It catches him off guard. And that's a great reaction from Cloud9 as well because once Skadoodle dies, they had no one else with eyes on connector. They knew they had to get there quickly, and they had to do the boost to bypass a Molotov thrown by G2. So very quick decision making from C9 on the defense. They've got themselves a 12 to seven lead. That was the first rifle round out of G2. So they were probably expecting a lot more out of that one. They don't, their buffer is really closing now. They don't have a lot of rounds left that they can lose, especially not rifle rounds. So right now Cloud9 obviously feeling a lot better. Seems to Doodle can do better this time. In fact, he's gonna pick up that kill on Apex. That's always good. It's not a bad job at all. And MBK just strolled right into that third bullet. Stewie wants more as well, waiting for the peek from Kenny. Looks away, but corrects himself quickly. This would be a good time to note on the desk, Sean talking about Cloud9's defense, how proactive they are and how good they are at working together, particularly on the CT side. And they haven't really allowed G2 to get a whole lot for free at any point in this half. 
Timing is good. Bomb has been dropped under the A ramp, so now it's just a question of whether or not Shots could find some freaky Deagle headshots. And if not, then probably will just be a quick end to the round. As soon as he's revealed himself, he's going to be in trouble. So G2 really needs something here. Again, I want to return to the question of where are the timeouts? Where's the break that they need right now, G2? Because this gap is looking a little bit scary to me. It really is. Uh, and I mean, I guess they're going to give themselves one more gun round to see if they have it in them. But you would almost like to see a tactical timeout here because that last round got shut down very, very quickly, not even aware of where Stewie was going to come from. This is Cloud9's pick, so it's not all doom and gloom for G2, but we did expect a flight out of the good things we've seen from them on this map very recently. This time they've got more utility to play with. Kenny, no armor on the AWP. And look at the stack from Cloud9. This is a heavy lean towards the B bomb site. They're going to have to be aggressive on Catwalk again. Because A is about to get hit hard. So this will be a lot quicker. Skadoodle in the corner. Tries to... Oh, he actually gets that shot on MBK. That's so much damage through the side of the wall as well. Rush trying to see if he can make his way in, but there's just so much smoke. It's going to be a quick trade there. NBK for automatic. But Skadoodle still has the angle covering the bomb side. They know where that bomb is. The one player here that could screw this all up right now for Cloud9 is Shocks. Oh! He gets taken down at top mid. He was covering that hard, but Stewie takes care of him. And now they can do the retake. That's such a big kill. They're three all, versus four. They're all three trapped at the ramp. They pushed out. There's a trade from Body. It's a two on three now. As Rush makes his way up, he gets the dink. Not the kill in a one on one. Oh, and he's going to get shot down. Kenny not going to try and bait him against the bomb. Ready and waiting for it. And that will be finally around here for G2 just barely. And I'm, I'm kind of shocked because as soon as Dewey gets that kill on top mid, things are looking a little bit rough for G2. Well, at that time, uh, I was trying to get it out before they busted it up. Three players on that A ramp as well from G2, and it almost saved them. They made the right call. They just had to get aggressive. Body pushes forward. Apex gets on top of the boxes. But if all three of them are bottleneck on that A ramp, that's likely a loss. 13 to 8, and I mean, you can see this. Because they only survive with one, look at this purchase. They don't have all the nades this time. Kenny's going to need a big round with his op. They need something to alleviate the pressure. Three players coming from Palace. NBK brought down. Kenny just snuck past. Skidoodle finds the timing. Stewie's pushing up, but that leaves the A site vulnerable. Oh no, Skadoodle is going to get picked off, but still, they have the two man lead. That smoke is not going to help all that much against the connector. They're trying to see if they get the bomb down quick. Apex just gunning straight for it. Shocks goes down. And now one versus four here for, a for Apex. Trapped in the corner, they have two, three Molotovs, in fact. There is absolutely no way he's going to be able to stand back here for very long at all. And already Stewie jumping up, looking for the kill. He is going to get shut down and rush on the other side. That will be round number 14 for Cloud9. And I'm not sure, Kenny walked so far into the middle with no backup at all. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that part's kind of confusing as well, obviously, trusting him. But it, it's tough to make those calls when you don't have any utility. You can see where the deaths of G2 happen if you go back and look at this round. I mean, Rush is able to get one from CT spawn towards Palace. The alt from Tarek ringing out for two kills. That just means when you attack the A bomb site, there's not enough smokes and flashbangs into the choke points to push that defense back. They obviously, I, I think the plan there was rely on Kenny, who's... You know, a phenomenal opera, one of the best in the world, but they had to rely on him to get a kill to alleviate the pressure through rotation because they didn't have the utility. And when he gets shut down, there's not a whole lot of ideas left. They're all in on this round, Anders. This is a bit of a scrim, isn't it? A couple of Mac 10s, a UMP. I'm not exactly loving this, although maybe they could run down Tarek. If he misses a single kill here, they could definitely just close the distance and he's immediately going to fall back. Flashing up behind him, they're still right on his tail, and Tarek now trying for the no scope. Skadoodle is there, oh my god! Tarek still staying alive inside the bomb site, getting the kill! How did he do that? They were all around him, they were hunting for him with those Mac 10s, and Apex is gonna be the last one left here. Bit of a long range there for the headshot, trying to make the jump, and he's gonna stay alive for the moment. Still a minute on the clock, switching up with the UMP, not very encouraging either. Looking inside of that kitchen, can he find the kill and pick up the bomb? There's so much to do here. Looking the wrong way for the moment. Looking all over the place. In fact, Skadoodle is right on the other side. And he wants to bait out the shot. He goes down. Round number 15 here. Cloud9 one single round away from taking away map number one. Smart mobility from Skadoodle. Just staying alive, getting out of the danger. But I mean, Tarek that round is an absolute monster. There's 
really no good option for him. You knew he got to fight his way out. And that's some plays born of pugging in North America right there. It's just everything's gone to hell around you. Finding a way to survive, finding a way to hit, land those disgusting shots. Born in the fires of rank S, he's, <laughs> he's now emerged and can Molded do anything. By it. Well, well, 24th round, ladies and gentlemen. Tarek and all the rest of them all at 16. Just rush a little bit ahead there at 24 kills. That is so impressive. And let's see if they can make this A execute work. G2 there with their backs against the wall, running right in. Stewie getting the spray down and rush there to pick it up. There's no chance here for the French. Cloud9, two kills away from picking up the first map. And with absolute style, they shut down Shoxi. 16 8 in favor of Cloud9 here. Map number one of the quarterfinals. Very well done indeed.